My name is Dora from Dora Chen Yoga, and I'm the host of the Vibrant and Nourished Mama Summit. I'm so happy to have you here and joining us uh, in this uh, event. So uh, here, I just want to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I am a former medical researcher turned holistic stress and nutrition coach. Um, I'm, in, uh, I'm trained in holistic nutrition, yoga, integrative restoration meditation, and Reiki. So in my practice, I primarily focus on uh, helping women, especially mothers, and helping to understand and address their stress and anxiety with a natural and holistic and integrative approach. So I've seen how mothers are being overwhelmed by stress, especially during this time of the pandemic. And this was why I was so excited and passionate about putting this summit together to support all the beautiful mothers, women, and, and men out there who may be feeling a little overwhelmed, tired, and in need of support. So there are actually many simple things that we can implement right away that could help us feeling better. And this is what this summit is all about. And I can't wait for you to catch all the interviews with the variety of amazing speakers that we have on and, and their you know, various modalities and tips and tools that you can take advantage of right now. But in this presentation, I want to focus on stress because this is the theme of the summit. And I think it might be helpful for us to have um, an introduction on what stress is and what we can do about it. So another thing before we move on is that uh, because I feel this is so important, I'm going to, uh, as a gift to you all, I'm going to uh, make available this presentation. So this presentation will always be free and available to you even after the summit. So make sure that you save this link if you want to listen to this again. Um, and so that I hope that this is, you know, a presentation that you can come back to again and again, whenever you need a, a reminder of, you know, what stress might be doing or how it might be manifesting in your life um, and, and how you can come back into your power. So here's an overview uh, of today's presentation. So firstly, we're going to look at what it actually means to be healthy, uh, what stress is, what, what are the different types of stress, how does, uh, how does stress affect us, and then we're going to move into looking at what are your personal uh, or health goals um, and, and why, why do you have these goals, and then lastly, we're going to talk about what we can do to stand in our power. And I'm going to talk about something called the heartfelt desire. So what is health? According to the uh, World Health Organization, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. And I love this definition, because it's you know, integrating all the different areas of health. So, you know, because I think that for a long time, when we think about, uh, when we thought about health, we thought about the, the physical aspect of health, you know, what's happening to us physically, what, what's happening to us, um, you know, in a physiological sense. Um, I think mental health is now being uh, coming more to the forefront, which is great, but I think there's still probably more work that we can do to bring more awareness to, to mental health. And with social health, I think, you know, this is such an important component as well. And through the experience of the pandemic, I think that we're starting to realize just how important this aspect really is. You know, during this time of, of isolation, you know, we can definitely feel the need to connect. And, and these are fundamental needs. We have fundamental needs to feel loved, connected with, and to have a sense of belonging. So all of these things are important. And what I love about this definition is that it's not, you know, just, you're not healthy just because you're not sick. 
right? So I think this is also very important because we tend to uh, put things off, I guess, you know, unless something happens, unless there's a symptom, unless there's an illness that we don't take enough time to stop, to slow down and to reassess what's actually happening. Uh, how are we feeling? Um, and, and are we in a state of health or are we in a state of stress, but perhaps not quite yet illness? And so I think these are very important things to think about when we think about health. Um, now, one other thing that I would add in here is spiritual health. I think this is um, a hugely important, uh, and if not, that's sort of, uh, as a spiritual teacher, I feel like that's sort of the backbone of, uh, of our health, really. And I'll, you know, hopefully be able to uh, touch on that a little bit more later on. Uh, actually, we will be we will be talking a little bit uh, more about this later in the presentation. But spiritual health, I think, it's still being overlooked, and and it is, uh, yeah, I think that that's that's the core to our being. Uh, I think when it comes down to it. But before I get ahead of myself, um, another thing that I want to bring to your attention is that everything is connected. So I believe that there's an interconnectedness to all things. And this also applies to our health. We can't sim uh, simply separate the different components of our health out and, and just try to deal with one and not another, because there's an interdependence, uh, you know, between our physical health, our mental health, emotional, spiritual, social, Everything is connected. They affect each other. They're dependent on each other. They're, they influence each other. And so in order for us to truly be healthy, health needs to be addressed in a holistic way. So we need to look after our mind, our body, and our soul to attain true health. And eventually, uh, it will lead us to true contentment or happiness and peace. So like I said, spiritual health is, is hugely important in our general well-being and it gives us a sense of purpose and meaning in life. And there's actually a body of research showing that people who have a regular spiritual practice had lower mortality rates, decreased depression and suicide risks, they appear to have enhanced healing um, or recovery from illness. And it's been associated with longevity. So it's not just all woo woo, you know, that, you know, a spiritual health um, is, has been found to be very important to, to our health and well being. Now, here I just want to. Uh, make a point that spirituality is not the same as religiosity. Uh, even though sometimes they, they do go, tend to go hand in hand, um, but you can be spiritual without um, affiliating with any religion, um, just as you can be religious, but not necessarily spiritual. So let me just, define what um, I think spirituality means to me. So I think that spirituality is about finding meaning, purpose, hope, comfort, and inner peace in life. It is believing that there is something bigger than yourself. It's about having faith that there is a greater power or a higher order. And some people find spirituality in religion, like I said, but some people may find spirituality uh, through music, through art, maybe through connection, connection with nature, or maybe they find their spirituality through having a sense of, you know, their personal values and principles. And so all of these things together, physical, mental, social, spiritual health, they're all, uh, they all play a role on how, you know, the overall health that, that you experience in your life. 
So then, what is stress and how does stress affect our health? Well, stress actually is not a bad thing. Stress is actually a normal response in our body. It's simply the reaction to changes in our physiological and psychological states. Okay, so we actually need some level of stress in our lives to, to be healthy, you know, to not have any, you know, stress, if you like, to not have any stress at all would in, its, in itself be a source of stress. So we do need this balance. Okay, so stress is not bad. We need some level of stress to to grow, to live, to thrive. It is really about the balance that's going to be important here. Now, to talk a little bit more about this, uh, I would like to for us to to be introduced to how stress uh, or, or the link between stress and the nervous system. So. Our nervous system is important to relay information from the brain to the rest of the body and vice versa, right? So meaning the brain could send uh, messages to different parts of the body, give them um, instructions to, to perform certain tasks, and the different areas of the body will pick up signals, whether internally or externally, and send these messages back to the brain to tell the brain what's going on out in the periphery. So, you know, there's communication there and, um, and then there are actions that, that we can control voluntarily, right? Such as our muscles and to some extent our breath. And then there are some other actions that happen, uh, that happen automatically, such as the regulation of our heartbeat, digestion, our temperature control and so forth. So, uh, what we want to focus on now is the, the latter part of the nervous system, which is called the autonomic nervous system or the ANS. We can very simply divide the ANS into two main branches, the, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. There is a, a third branch, which is the enteric, but today we're going to focus on, on the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. So these two branches work in opposition to each other to regulate our nervous system and hence how we respond and react to stimuli. So here's a very simple or simplified table of what happens uh, when uh, these different branches of the nervous system um, are switched on. Now, so the, the, let's start with the sympathetic nervous system which is in the, the red here. The sympathetic nervous system is also uh, known as the fight or flight response. Um, and basically this is switched on or becomes dominant when we are under stress, okay? And so when we are under stress, I mean, throughout evolution, uh, this stress response has been immensely important for us because our main source of stress, say in the caveman days, were you know probably running away from danger from a from a, uh, a predator, or you know when we're gearing up to 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 hunt when we're the predator, right? So either way, this stress response is switched on, and when this happens, what it does is it it's really you know, um, redirecting energy and resources in the bodies to um, prioritize certain body systems, which are going to help us to fight or flight or flee, right? So what you'll see here is that when the fight or flight response is switched on, your heart rate and blood pressure will go up. Blood flow to muscles and lungs and other areas, which are going to be important to help you um, you know, in this scenario uh, of fight or flight um, is going to increase. Other systems which are probably not so important, such as digestion and reproduction, right? Um, they're going to be uh, downregulated because when you're running away from, from a tiger, I think that it's probably not so important for you to digest your food or, you know, or, or to reproduce. 
So, um, and then there's going to be an increased release of stress hormones, which again is going to help uh, continue to, uh, well, it's going to play a role in many different biological processes to help in this fight or flight response. Um, one of them is it's going to start to in increase glucose in the blood, which is a source uh, of, of um, nutrient or energy to help supply um, the, the, the muscles that are going to be needing to work to help you fight or flee. And then uh, in general, immunity will go down because again, you're not going to be too worried about an infection that might, you know, come on, uh, uh, you know, in the next few hours or days when you need to be in this moment and get yourself out of danger. So generally, this is what happens when we switch on the sympathetic nervous system. Now, once you're out of danger, so when you're safe, what usually happens is that you're going to switch from this fight or flight response to the, this uh, green here, the parasympathetic nervous system, or also sometimes known as the rest and digest or rest, digest and heal uh, mode, if you like. And then, you know, the opposite occurs. Basically, you're gonna have decreased heart rate and blood pressure. Your breathing slows down. Your digestion or intestinal functions can, can increase again. Um, your stress hormone decreases, healing and restoration takes place, immunity goes up. So these two systems have been, or these two branches of the nerve systems have, uh, had been working quite well of us for, for millions of years and it was key to our survival. But recent, uh, recent times, uh, this system uh, has actually been a little bit detrimental to our health. And the reason for this is because, you know, when, when we're stressed, it doesn't matter what kind of stress that we're experiencing this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna switch on this fight or flight response. Now this fight or flight response, uh, like I said, it's, it's crucial to, to our, it was crucial to our survival, but what it was not meant to do was to have this fight or flight system switched on for a prolonged period of time. So the sympathetic nerve system is, uh, was designed to, to come on as needed and then to be switched off quickly. So that there's going to be, uh, you have the adaptability to switch between these two systems. And that, you know, most of the time we should be in this, you know, parasympathetic nervous system uh, or, or this uh, system should be uh, predominant. Um, but what's happening in today's society is that we're under so much stress and constant stress such that we are actually living mainly from this mode of the nervous system. So being constantly in the fight or flight mode, which our bodies are not designed, you know, that's not where we're supposed to be. Um, and it is this uh, phenomenon that is causing us to fall ill and, and sick. So there are different types of stress, right? Um, so we have, we have physical, mental, emotional stress. We have acute, we have chronic, we have severe acute stress. So what this means is let's start with the bottom three. So acute stress, this is short term stress. So we, we're stressed and then, um, we can come back to, to normal, um, over, uh, after a short period of time. Chronic stress is something that happens for the long term. And severe acute stress could be a, sort of a short-term stress that leads to long-term consequences, such as maybe if you were in, a, uh, in an accident and, and maybe you, um, you become uh, disabled after that. So, you know, that acute stress from the accident actually turns into something that's more long-term or maybe PTSD. There might be an incident that happened in a period of time. It's short-term, but you're suffering from the consequences um, afterwards. Now, focusing on the top three now, 
So physical stress, these are stress uh, that's been placed on your physical body. So this could be as a result of injury, infection, could be exercise, whether it be over-exercising or under-exercising. Um, these are all stresses on your body. We can have mental stress as well. Right? If we have a stressful or demanding job that requires a lot of mental energy, that could be a source of stress for us. And then emotional stress, you know, that's something that I think we all deal with. You know, we have uh, worries, we have anxieties about certain uh, things or people or situations. We worry about finances, career, marriage, family, so forth. So all of these things uh, might be present for us or <laughs> some of these things might be present for us. So the thing to note here is that the body doesn't differentiate between these different types of stresses, these top three that I'm talking about, physical, mental, emotional stress. And they, you know, the body will perceive all of these stress uh, as a threat um, and mount the same type of response, and that is to switch on the sympathetic nervous system. And like we said before, this is what is actually causing all, a lot of the chronic illnesses is because we're not meant to live in a state of fight or flight. Um, but because of the nature of the stress that we encounter, you know, it's not like running away from a predator, right? We actually can't get away Oftentimes we can't get away from the stresses that we feel. And oftentimes we create internally ourselves these stresses. And so that's the problem, right? That, that there's no way to switch off this fight or flight response. So chronic stress and inflammation. So I think inflammation, um, I think people say as though it's a bad word, but again, you know, just like stress, inflammation is necessary. It's a normal part of um, a normal process in our body. It's actually vital uh, to have for us to be able to uh, generate inflammation, right? It's a vital part of the immune response to injury and infection. It is the body's way of signaling to the immune system to heal and repair damaged tissue, as well as to defend itself against foreign invaders such as viruses and bacteria. And so without inflammation as a physiological response, wounds would fester, infections could become deadly, okay? So we need to be able to mount an inflammatory response. Now, the problem again is is the type of response that you're, you're getting, right? If the inflammatory response goes on for too long, or if it occurs in places where it's not needed, that's when it becomes problematic. And so just as with stress, we have, you know, acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation occurs, say, when you cut a knee or sprain an ankle. It's a short-term response, right? And the, the response is localized, and it works at the precise place where there is a problem. And when, you know, when the area is healed, then, you know, uh, that's it, right? It doesn't continue to, the, air, the area doesn't continue to, to be inflamed. Whereas with chronic inflammation, uh, it has a much more long-term and it's a whole body effect. So chronic inflammation is sometimes also known as persistent low-grade inflammation. And because it, it produces a steady low level of inflammation throughout the body. Um, and you can actually measure this by measuring in the blood or in certain tissues, um, there, there are certain immune, uh, immune markers that can be measured. So in this way, inflammation can contribute to a lot of the chronic illnesses that we see. Now, chronic stress and inflammation um, are, are related. So, so here are some of the statistics. You have 75 to 90% of human diseases is related to stress because these are the diseases that, uh, that we experience. We experience a lot of chronic illness. 
Now, chronic stress is associated with chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is associated with chronic disease, such as cardiovascular disease, autoimmune diseases, metabolic diseases, psychotic and neurodegenerative disorders, cancer. I mean, the list can go on. And I think it all, again, comes down to when we are not um, functioning in a way that the body's designed to function, this is what's going to happen in the long run. So if being healthy means finding balance in all states of our health, and stress is the result of upsetting this balance in the various states of our health, then improving health is really about finding a way to decrease our stress so that we can regain harmony. So what are some of the things that influence our stress? There are many things that influence our stress because like we said, everything is interconnected, right? So we can even argue that everything and anything uh, influence our, our stress and our health. But rather than get into a philosophical discussion here, let's focus on some of, um, I guess, the, the simple or more tangible things that we can do to change our health and our lives in a positive way. So here on the list, you'll see that these are some of the uh, more important and foundational aspects that we can act on and implement or make changes to in our lives, which have a huge impact on our health and well being. So, for instance, here we have, you know, environment, you know, what is your living and or working environment, right? What are you dealing with? You know, pollution, chemicals, toxins, what else, you know, is in your environment? Food, the type of food that you eat, nutrition is, a, is hugely important digestion is just as important, right? You can't, if you can't digest the good food that you're feeding the body, the body cannot extract the, what it needs from the food. Physical activity, sleep, these are all um, hugely important uh, on our health. And, and I don't think anyone would, would argue with those things. And in fact, we do tend to focus on those things when we think about, oh, what do I need to do to improve my health? But, you know, other things, perhaps uh, things that we are not so conscious about or we don't prioritize as much are um, our emotions, our mindset and outlook and our perception, perception of stress. So what I find really interesting is that we tend to focus a lot on external factors when we think about managing stress, right? Like we just talked about, you know, food, environment, exercise and all that which are all important, <laughs> but in my opinion, one of the biggest generator of stress is us, right? A lot of the stress that we feel are generated internally. And in fact, it is not just the, you know, the stressor or the, the trigger or, or stimula, stimulus that's important here, you know, surely, yes, you know, they're there, they trigger, trigger us, um, and, and, and they cause stress, you know, for instance, if you, if you have a physical injury, you know, yes, you know, that's a, a, a tangible stress, you can even measure, um, measure the, the extent of, of the uh, injury, right? But having said that, you know, how stress you're going to feel in response to that, say that injury is going to vary from person to person, because our you know, our perception of stress is, it plays such a huge role to, to the overall stress that we feel. And in some cases, our perception of stress solely determines how stressed we feel. So in my practice, while I do address many of the external factors. In fact, all of the things that you see on the, this list, I address them in my programs because I see that, you know, definitely the, the importance in addressing these things. But my main focus is actually on shifting mindset and our perceptions, because I believe that these are actually the crux of the issue. 
And we're going to touch on that now, or touch on what I mean about that. So I assume that many of you are here today because there is something that you want to change, right? So why not take a moment and just to, to consider what are your health and or personal goals that you want to achieve? So what is something that you want to, or what's a goal that you want to set for yourself? And then I want you to think of why. Why do you want to set these goals for yourself? And I think this is a really important question that we often just skip over, okay? You might think that it's obvious, right? You might think, wow, you know, I want to be healthier. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that obvious? Who wants to be sick anyways, right? Or you might want to grow personally. Um, maybe you want to be more confident, right? So that you could be more successful in your work or your career. You might want to nurture your relationships with friends or family. And, you know, these may seem pretty obvious, you know, why you want to do these things. And they may even seem to be um, an answer in themselves, right? But I really want to challenge you to go deeper and ask yourself, why? Why is it important to you that you feel healthier? Why is it important to you to feel more confident or have a better job or a better career or have better relationships? Why? Why is it important to you to have those things? And as we ask ourselves these questions, you might begin to feel something begin to, to surface, right? And that is, what is currently what is currently missing in your life that you perceive you will gain by making this particular change right what are what are some voids that you're trying to fill what are what is the void that you're trying to fill and why do you think that by um, making this change it's going to help you feel uh, to, to fill these voids. We need to get clear about the why before we take action. Because ultimately, this is the driving force and motivation that drives us to act, to respond, to behave in certain ways. And there's a lot of times that we do things, not because we want to do it, right? Oftentimes we do things because we have been conditioned or programmed to feel that we need to do these things. We may feel pressured to do something that we don't actually want to do or to be other than who we are. We might, you know, decide to, you know, such as, I don't know, do a fad diet, do this detox plan or program or, or join a gym membership that we actually never end up using? Why, why do we do this, right? Well, when we live from a place of shoulds or when we're living for others, we are not living in alignment with our, our own deepest heartfelt desires. When we try to live in a way that goes against our deepest life purpose or calling, we will never be content. We will never be happy. What will happen though is we've been, because it's missing and we feel that it's missing, we feel something is missing inside, we continue to go searching for the solution. How do we fix this? That's how we've been taught and trained to think and behave, right? How do we fix this? And what happens oftentimes is that we start looking outside of ourselves, trying to find something out there to help fill our voids. But unfortunately, that, that doesn't work. It's not going to work. 
and here I'm not just telling you this as a you know uh, uh, as a uh, philosophical kind of um, uh, way or <laughs> explanation, but I'm telling you this from my personal experience. When we continue to search what's outside of us, we're not gonna find the answers. What is needed instead is for us to slow down and get back in touch with what is truly important and meaningful to us. Now, while there has been many advances, you know, for instance, science and technology um, in, in the modern day world, we have at the same time moved further and further away from ourselves. And what I mean by this is that we have become increasingly more disconnected with our internal environments and we are taught to focus all our attention and energy on things and objects outside of ourselves. We are conditioned to think that for us to feel safe, we need to control our outer environments. And at the same time, we have not been taught how to deal with the things that come up in our internal environments. we have created separation where there is none. So before setting your health or personal goals, we need to be clear on what you truly want. What, you know, what are these wants or desires? Are, are they even yours or are they other people's? Are you feeling pressured? that you should be doing something or you should be a certain way? Or is this what you truly want for yourself? Are you operating from a place of fear or are you coming from a place of love? What drives you in life? What gets you excited about life? What do you live for? Understanding this is crucial to you finding deep inner peace and true happiness. And it is from this place of peace, this place of groundedness and wholeness, will you truly stand in your power. Acting from a place of love, place of compassion, while feeling at peace, feeling completely um, whole and, and, and completely, um, completely accept yourself for who you are, what you need and what you live for, truly feeling that in your whole body and mind, that is truly standing in your power. And from that place, you're able to set firm and loving boundaries for yourself. So summarizing here, we talked about what it means to be healthy. We talked about the effects of stress, how, uh, how stress affects your body, the types of stress that we experience and why stress um, is, I guess, is causing so much health uh, problems for us in, in our society today. We talked about um, inquiring into your health and personal goals. And I challenge you to, to think a little bit uh, or, or get a little bit deeper with your inquiry as to why you want to set these health and personal goals for yourself. What is the real underlying issue um, or that, that what is driving you to, to want these things for yourself? And then lastly, we talked about what it really means to stand in your power and getting in touch with what is really meaningful and important to you. What is your heartfelt desire? And learning to, to be in touch with that place, 
and in time to act from that place. So if you found this presentation to be helpful and if you're interested in exploring how you can get in touch with your heartfelt desire to start setting meaningful goals and intentions for change, I will be hosting a free five-day challenge starting uh, on May, 20, uh, May 24th. So it's called Five Days to Fulfilling Your Heart's Desire. And we're gonna go through in detail uh, some of the things that we talked about today. So we're gonna help you understand the deeper underlying reason, motivation or drive for certain health or personal goals that you set and understanding if you're operating from a place of fear or limiting beliefs and to help you to shift out of that and to discover what your true heart's desire really is. What is your purpose in life? Because it's really, it is from this place of love and true purpose that's going to help you to make the, these meaningful and long lasting changes that will transform your life. So definitely, if you were uh, interested, um, definitely check it out. You'll find the link to my free challenge um, in the descriptions below. Um, you can already start registering for, for, for this challenge. So I encourage you to do that if you wanted to dig a little bit deeper um, into what we talked about today. I will also start my next round of 12 week group coaching program starting in uh, mid June. And so there uh, in my program, I will dive deeper into helping you to explore your internal environment. So uh, part of what we talked about today, we're gonna go in detail um, in that program. And we're gonna identify the blocks and restrictions that you have in your mind, body, and soul. And I will show you how to live in alignment with your heartfelt desire and give you tools and practices, not only to help you deal with your daily stresses, but to transform the way you look at stress, to transform your relationships with your, you know, your partner, spouse, family, friends, your kids, but most importantly, to transform the relationship that you have with yourself. So all of this work will ultimately bring you true nourishment, vibrancy, peace, and happiness. So I'm offering um, all the uh, summit attendees, so all you beautiful ladies, uh, $800 off the usual pri price of my coaching programs. So what will happen is that if you're interested, you can definitely go to my website and I'll put a link uh, underneath as well. Uh, book a free discovery call with me, a uh, free discovery call with me where I can talk a little bit more uh, or explain to you what the program is about and to see whether we're a good fit for the program. And if so, you know, just mention the summit and you're going to get $800 off the usual price. So yes, um, if you have any questions or if you're interested in learning more about my work, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Um, and you'll find me at Dora Chan Yoga. I have my website here. So my website is dorachanyoga.net. And you can also email me at um, Dora at dorachanyoga.net. Again, all of this information will be linked in the description below. Now, if you enjoyed this session, make sure you go ahead and jump over to um, our private Facebook group, which I created just for this summit. You will find the link at the bottom of this page to join the group if you haven't already. Um, I'll be around to answer any questions that you might have. So definitely go there. Um, you can connect with me that way as well. And also we will have live Q&A sessions with, um, with me and also um, other speakers that uh, are presenting today. You're gonna have a chance to connect with us, uh, come in live to speak with us. So if you want to do that, again, jump over to the Facebook group. You're gonna find instructions as to how to join our live speaker panel. And lastly, we have prizes and giveaways happening over in the Facebook group as well. So just 
please just go there, check it out. We have lots happening. You're going to have lots of fun there. So I look forward to connecting with you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.